Alright, let's just uh, check if this works. I have no clue. <laughs> Alright, it does. Alright, cool. <laughs> From handshakes push Yo, I don't know what's going on in this server. <laughs> Be there in a bit. <laughs> All right, boys. Anyway. Last time this we were playing this game, we got the library because we're on the true ending right now. So let's just explore the library, shall we? All right. There's a note on the table. Lights the books, huh? What does that mean? Interesting. Well, intelligence often hides itself in darkness. Have you ever thought about the pages of a book? Each page only sees, what, maybe two or three minutes of light before the reader is on to the next? Then the rest of their lives locked in darkness. Rather like myself. That's horrible. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Not at all. I live in the darkness, yes. But that's gifted me with the ability to catch the truths others might miss. I can hear the voices in darkness, you might say. Alright, that was it. The Tamriel's made metal. Thank you. Tele... Teletemperation and telepathy. What the hell is this one about? Well, I know what telepathy is, but never heard of teletemperation. We're first having the ability to travel through time. Thank you. This book's called uh, Mind Swap. You mean you could, like, change bodies with someone? Well, I guess little brother Junpei too much, but I'd rather die unless someone suits me. What the hell? Like, I didn't even want to swap bodies with a brat like. Hey, were you just imagining it? You were. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't the only one. Oof, Jupe. Jupe. <laughs> You're supposed to be the main character here. Kitab al Azif. Man, they got some weird stuff here. Can't pronounce this one. Who's that? Some famous guy? It's not a person's name. It's name of a fictional book created by Abdul al Azran. It's said to be one of the sources used in the creation of the legendary Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. Oh, so these are all occult books and stuff. Lovely. This one says the golden rabbit on the moon on it. Does that mean it's about a rabbit that lives on the moon? <laughs> Rabbits are pretty cute. What's the moon stuff about? It's talking about the Judas trees that's said to grow on the moon, according to Chinese legend. Alright, thank you for that, yes. To deal with these titles. They're all just gibberish. Hey, what if you like switch them around? Switch them around? Yeah, what if you move around? Maybe they'll spell something. Oh, I get it. Yeah, heck, it's worth a shot. Alright, like, guys, 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 like. Wait, that, that, was that really that hard to figure out? Hooray, you did it, Jupe. I guess that turned out well enough. So, let I spell out, open here, find bulb. And we found a bulb. So, I mean, you're not wrong. Quantum gravity. Seven, do you have any idea what this is? How about you start by using real words? So maybe we'll get somewhere. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> Property value is going up to space these days. Man, guess times are tough for aliens, too. This one says cosmic inflation. I... So those lines have been switched. My top. Alright. We already looked here. No, we already looked there. Energy theory, huh? I don't even understand the damn title. Looks like this shelves with science technology. Paleontology. This one's about fossils, right? Ammonites are pretty nasty looking. The transition of extinct species. That. <laughs> we need to hurry up, or we're gonna be end up in the pages of a book like that. 
Introduction to geology, huh? Thinking about the Earth even when you're on the ocean. Kind of romantic in a way, I guess. Theories of the Cambrian explosion. Did a bomb go off near somewhere called Cambria? Wrong kind of explosion. Roughly 500 million years ago, as known as the Cambrian period, research shows that the variety of living organisms increased by a number of order of magnitude. Why that happened is, however, still something of a mystery. There are a number of theories. This book is most likely a collection of them. Theory of evolution. Heck, <laughs> I even know this one. That's the Darwin guy, right? Well, yes and no. Charles Darwin wrote a book called On the Origin of the Species. In it, he put forth his theory of evolution. Yeah, I remember that part. You call it natural selection? Exactly. Mother Nature. It's about a book about the hippie chicks. Uh, probably not, except perhaps tangentially. It's most likely about environmental protection. I was just trying to make a joke. Dude, hippie chicks? Huh, really? Alright, seriously, where am I inspecting? Downstairs? Owen, huh? Owen is enough to go on. That's just about the English Revolutionary. Dad kind? What the hell is this? I'm not a German mathematician. Maybe it's a compilation of his work. Leibniz? Leiber Leibniz? This book's in German. It looks like it's the complete work of something. I've never heard of it. Well, Snake doesn't know what it is. I don't think we'll ever know. Sheldrake? Sheldrake. Isn't Sheldrake... It didn't solve their what? Thanks for nothing, game. Mm. How's break number theory? Math, huh? Another one like that over there. I mean, something like primary number theory, or analytical number theory, or geometry? Oh my gosh, how did you know? No, I said anything about those. Well, number theory is used in the four chief disciplines. If there was, I guess the three would be there as well. Looks like I was right. Ba 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 ba. What's happening? This place is algebraic number theory. This one's called Goldback's Injecture. Injecture? What's about like magic or psych stuff or something? <laughs> Alright, I bet it's about jewelry, isn't it? It may have an odd title, but it's actually a very respectable mathematics book. Let's deal with one of the unsolved problems of added in number theory. Ah, sorry I said anything. Looks like the song. Ah, let's not get into this right now. I can't speak. That's a weird book, Junpei. Indian mathematics. <laughs> it's funny. Why is that funny? <laughs> it says Riemann hypotheses. What is that hypothesize about Riemann? Isn't that pretty straightforward? Heavens no. There are many factors. Length, the girth, lubrication, or lack of. An exciting, rapidly growing field. Whoa. Whoa. Pythagorean theorem. This is a famous one. I think there are a number of math books in this section. Alright boys, enough math, but let's get over here. Huh, let's see what we got here. So many books here. I wonder what this one's- Whoa, what's this? Warm? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh no, I'm- I'm sorry. Hey, what's all this sappy stuff? What are the books of folklore and myth here? There are dim lights on the floor. Dim lights. I had three points across the floor. There are three lights on this thing. They aren't very bright though. And anyway, we found we got a really powerful light bulb earlier. Why don't we put it in one of those lights? Yeah, well, it'll get a lot brighter, but. But if there are three lights, I mean, three light bulbs. Ah, that won't be much fun unless you replace all three bulbs. Three light bulbs, huh? Long closure with nine sides. Three of these things that look like kind of music stands. Let's just put something on the stands. Look, book stands. I assume that's what they are. Books of a sword glass. Pretty big with only six books in it. Seems so kinda weird. Look, something on the bottom. Can't really see it though. Glass is all foggy. Can we open it? Awesome. Lock on the glass door. Yep, won't budge. Lovely. Alright, hold on. I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm playing bolted down. I think it's door. Kinda looks like a wall. Alright. Probably something right here, right? Eyes. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know it. I don't. All 
I'll be honest, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Pokemon myth. Modern Japanese literature, huh? What's this? Origin of Japanese folklore? Looks like there are a bunch of books about Japanese culture here. Mostly ones about folklore, though. Well, folklore can cover a wide range of subjects. History, urban life, religious trends, environmental changes, oral traditions. Folklore can cover all those things if you know where to look. This looks pretty deep. Yeah, that's deep, bro. Picture book here. It's like an old folk tale. Don't you think it's so weird that the book's only a picture book? Maybe you ought to hold on to it. Agriculture and historical organization and folklore. Books in all sorts of languages, but there's something special about the shelf on the left. What do you mean, shelf on the left? Right here? Okay. I got sort of a cylinder lock. You know, the kind of lock where you rotate numbers around until you got the right ones to open it? What the hell is this? Looks like you just give us the answer. Might as well give it a shot. Okay. Uh, six, three, two, four, one, five. Six, three, two, one, four, five. Six, three, two, one, four, five. Guess not. Well, I tried. <laughs> uh, six, three, two, four, one, five. Five, one, four, two, three, six. Maybe. Five, one, four, two, three, six. Okay, no. Six, three, two, four, and five. Uh, did I put that written wrong the first time? Six, three, two. Okay. Six, three, two, four, one, five. You did it, Jupe! Yay! I don't know why, but I don't really feel particularly happy about being praised for that. Whatever, at least the lock's open now. Let's see if we can get it open, alright? Got the bulb. All six we see pointing at the cylinder number lock. I mean, that was oddly simple. I'm gonna read them. Alright. Anything else I'm missing? Mainly these books down here, considering I have no idea what they mean. Like, I, I honestly have no clue what any of this means. At all. Help. Less. All right. What's happening? Oh, my server was like. By the way, he's streaming, guys. Good. Go check out the stream. If you didn't know, he's streaming. Yeah, I am streaming. Thank you, Discord server. Yeah, I don't. One, two, seven, eight. Sheldrake, volume number written. The O N is in light blue, darkened on it. The yellow book with library is written on. Ah, okay. Okay. I don't know what any of this means. It's over here. Okay, no, we just get back here. Alright, well. Energy theory. I think you're reading titles. You can't say physical technology stuff, but I get along real well. I'm talking about this stuff, and you're gonna put me to sleep. The black hole hypothesis. Gamma ray astrophysics? I guess this bookshelf is an astronomy theme. Historian of the medieval period. 
maybe it's about Sir Lancelot. Is he just a story? I don't think you're gonna find a guy who didn't really exist in a history book. Hey, it's another one of those kids' picture books. Look a lot like the other one, Tom. Alright, that's two books. Oh, well, hello there. Hello there. What's Hellenism? I think it's some kind of like a fusion of Greek and Oriental culture. Permian creatures. Seems a little fancy for some kind of prehistoric critter. Not to mention Fimians without hair. I can't imagine they had much perms. That's got nothing to do with this. <laughs> Look, this one says culture heritage of Rome. But that's going to be some serious inherited sacks. History of Buddhism. Huh. I just checked that shelf? I think I did. Alright, check back here. Oh, history of the medieval period. Wait, was this the one I just like... Yeah, okay. This one with the p p Papa books. I think they're part of a series of them. They have the same binding. Baseball on this one. Come on, Jupe, let's see what's in it. Well, Lemon says it's probably a baseball. Whoa! Oh, I'm supposed to look inside these. Alright, let's just... Let's have some Native Americans on the cover. Hey, Jupe, take a look at this one. Native Americans, huh? Maybe it's got some... Whoa! It's got a magic wand on it. Okay. So, what's inside? Well, aren't you gonna open it? I'm uh, pretty sure it's gonna have pages inside tomorrow. Whoa! <laughs> SE5... Um... 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 Kill 7. Yo, I don't want to kill 7. I don't know, 7's pretty chill. I don't... I don't want to kill 7. This one just says head. Whoa! <laughs> SE5. Uh, kill 7 and head. I don't want to do any of those. Yeah, human equilibrium theory. Human anatomy. Red generation of internal organs. Function of the human brain, huh? I guess this is a book about nervous system. I'd love to ask you to read it to me, but I don't think we have the time. I'm kind of curious about it too. There's gotta be a reason why people connect with each other, you know? I agree. Big opening is door to the library. Pretty impressive. It almost like the door to a shrine or a church or something. Whoa! Another door after and the pathway beyond that. In the end of that pathway, the door with that Neptune symbol engraved on it. Hurry up, we need to find a cue in the market in Neptune. Okay, this sounds like a job for the best brother. Man, it's like something that I don't even exist. <laughs> do you though? Like, like, do you really exist? Because, I, I, I mean, I don't think you do. Yeah, can I go downstairs? What the heck, man? I wasn't gonna, but now that you bring it up. Can I, like, go downstairs, plus? I, I could have sworn I was a great year. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'll take the long way down. Alright, so something here. Uh, it's something like Kill 7. Um. Yeah, I don't know what you really want me to do. Pop a book. Alright. Alright. Yo, I'm just gonna assume that I can't do anything because I don't have the light bulb and they figure out what to do. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's like. Guess this is one of the theme. Got the letters L or K popping out of it. Give me a case, it's them though. Large, round, and kinky. <laughs> ah, probably not. Looks like another pop up book. There's an S and E, a dash, and number 5 thing out of it. Might be impressive if I, if I was 5. That's a dash. Pop up book. We got the letters H E A D popping out of it. Well, I mean, that one's obvious. Alright, so, what we do, no clue, um, SE-5, uh, there's an R, an R, okay, picture, L, R, and K, so you know, huh? L, R, K? L. Um. 
Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> no clue what's happening. Alright, I guess they I mean nothing to me. <laughs> oh, Indian mathematics? Why is this shelf so like... This shelf seems so important and I don't know why. I... I don't understand. Did I see Pythagorean Theorem? Yeah, you didn't. The scaffold, thank you. I might die. <laughs> Don't do that. There's no one talking to the shows. Lights to the books! Yeah, okay, I, I, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Other nature, ontology. Why did mankind lose the tails? JP, do you know what this was about? Why are you asking me? I didn't even know he had tails to lose. He just asked the human with tail. Mankind's ancestors most likely lost their tails if they were no longer useful and their nature took around to grow them. Or better put out to use elsewhere. At least that's what I read. I was really young, maybe I remembered it incorrectly. Huh, why the hell would a kid be reading a book like this? Don't question him. Is the, is the handrail being made out of metal like an important part of this or like is it's just like <laughs> It's a coat rack like a place where you can hang coats and hats and stuff. Well, this one's not too big. So maybe just hats Well, I mean That bit of knowledge was completely useless, but thank you anyway Um If you do this enough, something happens. <laughs> oh, I thought something happened. Oh, okay. Last time seven was like, hey, don't push me. All right. I need to figure out what to do there. I thought I've examined all the bookshelves at this point. Not any mathematics? Which were the Hypotheses or something. Gold box conjecture. Let's break number theory. So all sorts of things. I can't read them. Folklore and myth here. No, oh, get bring me back down. Some of the book in Japanese literature from modern Japanese literature. Ah, literature. It's not a picture book on itself anymore. Well, yeah, because he took it. Culture and historical organization of folklore. So this book in Japanese folklore and oral traditions. Okay. What does any of this have to do with anything? Weird book here called Indian Mathematics. Why is that important? Like, do I have to go through every bookshelf in this place? Because I will. Like, if I'm missing something, I will go, like... Okay. Alright, we went through these. Start at the top. Alright. Energy and theory. Uh, Faraday's laws of electrolysis. I believe that's going to mean electrolysis and electrolyte solution. These particular laws were set down by Michael Faraday. Okay, thank you. Quantum gravity, theory of general relativity, huh? Oh, I know this one. That's Einstein, right? What's this? An overview of conformal field theory? Ah, oh, well, it's a theory that points an invariant quantum field where conformal transformation can take place. Knock it off the science voodoo stuff. You try to put me to sleep? 
See what the master of string theory fundamentals face on, huh? First, talking about super string theory, the theory of reality, where um, how to explain? Since that all elements of the universe are governed by the vibrations and the harmonics of tiny supersymmetric strings. All right. Look up paleontology. Clover still jumps. She's an impressive. Mycographia, huh? Ah, yes, Strawberry Hook's famous work. First thought of this in 1665. He built substance and the other too small to be seen in detail by human eyes. He had drew pictures of many of the things he examined and published them in a book. I hazard a guess and shelf with the natural scientist. Creature of the South Seas, huh? This has got a picture of colorful fish and stuff. Looks pretty old. Theories of Cambrian Explosion. Uh, evolution, Mother Nature. Ontology. Did I just go through this? Yeah. Super symmetric. Alright, okay, I went through that already. Alright. Something over there. Alright. The history of Buddhism. Uh, the of Rome. It's called History of the Western World. Well, I assume it's like European history. Uh, yeah, just gonna leave it at that sake. Doesn't seem like you. <sighs> Oriental history. Uh, maybe this one's about China's 4,000 years of history or something? Hey, Chinese history and Oriental history aren't the same thing. Hey, look at this. This book called Greek Mythology. Damn, that thing's huge. Can't imagine anyone actually read the whole thing. Pretty sure it just put me to sleep. I'm sure snakes read it. Principle of the monkey behavior, huh? I imagine that's a book describing praxeology studies on monkeys. Monkeys are very similar to humans evolutionary, so I imagine the research is fruitful. Oh, look, Seven, here's a book that's perfect for you. It's called Correlation of Muscle, Bone, Density, and Bone Strength. You like just saying that because it says muscle. This book's called Dissection. This bookshelf must be on medical books. From what I can tell, it sounds as though these books have been organized with genre. This library must be massive. I'm rather impressed how well organized it is. Books are all about human anatomy. Books that look suspicious. Some function of the human brain. Dissection atlas, huh? Full shelf of medical books. Look, this one called Recreation of Lost Human Functions. You know, talking about it, like you lose your part of body and then you grow back. <sighs> I don't think so. Maybe they're talking about reconstructing abilities that humankind once possessed. In other words, they're really talking about cultivating a sixth sense. I'm gonna think over a little bit more. Ancient gladiators, what's this book doing here? Maybe they were researching human physical limits across history. I mean, maybe. We're just gonna leave it at that, say he's right. What's that, some sort of comic book? Jeez, I guess boys really like that stuff, huh? Now you're thinking of a sort of robot. This book's talking about automated machinery that used to build things like cars. Communication computer science, huh? That's a pretty generic title. To be honest, so vague, I don't really know what it might be about. An overview of photochemistry? I think whoever set this up wanted to see the co cover, not the spine. Let's look at it, okay? Huh, let's see if there's a lot of space on these books. Look, Dupe, I think there's something hidden behind the books. Wow. Wow, guys, we can do it now. <laughs> wow, guys, I said look at every bookshelf in the damn library. Wow. Wow, guys. Wow. Alright, so there are three lights in here. I'm gonna change these bulbs. No, they shouldn't. Shell break five. Awesome, it worked. Where do you go, Jupa? Good job, bye. There's something projecting on the bottom. These letters seem familiar. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Shield Drake 5. It says Shield Drake on the side of this book. It's got the volume number written in the lower part of the spine. Yes, Shield Drake 5. Please, just don't be an idiot for once. Oh my god. Okay, 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 listen. Shield Drake 5? I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Of course I had to click on it. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. I know where it okay. is. I've been there like four times. Sheldrake. 
Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Yeah, Lotus told me about him. There's a, There's British, a British biochemist, biochemist named Sheldrake. Sheldrake. He has, he a, has rather a rather interesting, interesting theory. theory. Morphogenetic, Morphogenetic fields, fields, which relies, which relies on, the on the theory of morphic, morphic resonance. resonance. Morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? <laughs> From Lotus? You know, the girl that does absolutely nothing and just makes fun of Seven a lot. Yeah, no. For some, for some strange reason, I don't believe you. Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. Ah, see, now I, I believe Clover. She did? <laughs> yeah, um... Never says Lotus, the ability I think to access Warframe. a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. You did? Why? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. <laughs> yeah, just leave those two down there. Hey, go by the going upstairs. Uh, I don't I know, probably doesn't I matter. I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet. And to be honest, the explanation Clover, why are they going upstairs? <laughs> I don't know, probably doesn't matter. Let's keep looking at books randomly. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards? No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say, there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero too? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the thing she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've I decided mean, to tell I'm you the glad. truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. Well, and I mean, he kind of just even if he were, stole, I like, three of the other people that were in here with us and then just left after threatening to shoot your sister. So... Yeah, no, I, th I think we're safe. I, th I think maybe we're safe. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure he wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. Hmm. Hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Glad you figured that out after. The, the, Clover told the, me about. Ooh, flashbacks. Oh, never mind. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. I was hoping for more Clover. Had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. Why Nevada? No one knows. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Yo, it's Ace. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. 
Kubota led the company's research and development division. Is that the ninth man? Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm. Let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. And I'm sure the company had more than four people. To that end, they organized a top secret team to assist them with their research. I know all, Hongo is ace, ten people but so. I'm pretty sure the scientist right here is the ninth man. I could be wrong about that though. Their team, and they, were, they named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. Wait, there was ten of them, not nine of them? That was the first time, I think, in this game ever that they used the number other than nine for something. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control I'm surprised. was the morphogenetic field. I'm surprised. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Morphogenetic hmm. field. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. Are you going to tell me about ICE-9 too? That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people, right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say, one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. Y'all, alright, what if a million people just randomly did handstands at the exact same time? All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Whoa. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would... If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. If I want to kill someone, you want to kill someone too. Imagine Yay. another scenario. Imagine another person. Despair. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? Dude, imagine just like randomly doing handstand one day and then like tomorrow all your neighbors are doing handstands and then the next day the entire state's doing a handstand next day it's the country and then the next day it's the world what would happen then mm. a person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same jesus you could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver what would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these so the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. Today by city, tomorrow the whole world on a whole new level. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. 
What are we doing today? Ah, same thing we do every day, Pinky. Okay, plan to take over the world. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove Probably that, butcher that line. you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to I wonder if anyone experiment. actually got that reference. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei? Try to take over the world. Have you I'm surprised you got the, the reference. Congratulations. No, I, I haven't. You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. In theory, it is supposed to test for the existence of telepathy. Are you pondering when I'm pondering, Pinky? Oh. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might Wait, be able to access Wait, isn't the guy with the, the mustache the dead guy in the cabin? Of course, none of them volunteered. So I'm assuming the third guy right there is person X, right? The fake snake? Ninth Man Ace, the fake snake, and the guy they found dead they in the cabin. They were kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Nothing dares in a nutshell. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink, and what your if brothers the people and sisters what, will drown. What if the people in Group A just figure Those it out by themselves? Orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic and building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, 
they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Oh, they finally realized you're gone. Here already. He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. That was the girl who... died. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died? Nine years ago? Then... Who is Chun? No. That's impossible. I'm sorry? It can't be true. Akane I'm sorry, a what? Of the name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too, but it doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, alright? We're Snake and June related. I mean, not Snake, sorry. We're Santa and June related. Aoi is derived from Ao, meaning blue, and the Kanai is derived from Aka, meaning red. <laughs> We're Santa and June related. And then June died nine years ago. And when Santa was talking about, like, his sister, it was so funny, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna threaten my sister with a gun. Have fun, guys. I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. Cool, I can go to the this bookshelf again and actually do something this time. Yellow book with the red... No, wait, sorry, it's this one. Sheldrake, this is it. Uh, just pointing to it. Let's say five at the end of the picture. I think we need to find the volume. Wow, a button! Big red button! Guys, push the big red button! Wow. Big red buttons. Wow. Oh, there's two ways we can go. What was that sound? I feel like something really big was moving. Came from the top floor. Alright, let's go check it out. Touchy the button. Touchy the button. Whoa! <laughs> the keyboard from the numbers, and there are four Roman numerals on the wall. Gotta be hint some sort. Uh, the 13, 14. 10 and 13. <laughs> oh, Roman numerals. Can you see putting numbers from the wall on the keyboard? No, you can't. The keyboard doesn't have any number keys. You can't type in stuff like 3 or 4. Huh, that means. Let me carve some Roman numerals on the wall. Okay. 13, 14, X, and. 13, 14, 10, and 4. I know what to do, boys. I know what to do. I just need to figure out how to do it again. <laughs> Hold on, boys. Hold on. I got this. Let me figure out how to do it again. Alright, hold on. Hold on. On the American system chart. Alright. Alright. So. D E. Alright, guys. It's, it's dead. The answer's dead. Alright. The answer's dead. All right, can I type, please? All right, all right, cool. 
All right, so the answer is dead. So that's 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 wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, I feel so safe. You did it, Junpei. It's a luck now. Good job, Junpei. Well, there. Don't get too excited. Password is dead. Remember? It makes you think when I was waiting for us isn't good. So what? Jeez, you're such an old lady. We can't be worried about the stuff like that. I mean, come on. We got unlocked, didn't we? Let's go. Hurry up. All right, handle. Time to get it over with. Damn it! I can't get it open. This thing won't even budge. What? Why not? We put in the password. What else do we have to do? And that means it's the other door. All right, let's get this thing open. Yeah, unlock to your death. You found it. You found your death. All right, this is the next. Ah, oh, the door. Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. I don't know. Let's see. Damn it. Whoa! It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave? Well, yeah, that might work, but... Uh, hey! Wait a minute! Are you saying we're gonna have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. Oh, man. <sighs> Looks that way. No way! For real? For real? Well, we can sit down and wait to die, if that's what you prefer. I'd I mean, doubt that, however. why not? So it would be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. <sighs> <sighs> All right then, let's begin. Find a way out. Well, seek a way out. Because this game's like, hey, let's use the word seek. Piles of crap everywhere. Ah, this place is a mess. It's so messy. I don't know where to start. Some of this crap looks familiar. I think a lot of these parts of puzzles we solved in the other rooms. That's true, then. This room could be Zero's laboratory. Perhaps the machines and puzzles he needs to save his tank of the fruition. Um. Pile of junk. Nothing useful here. Hey, Jupe, isn't this a nautical table? Yeah, it feels like I've seen this before. New materials now to the file screen. Alright, so literally nothing there. Some old computer monitors on his desk. You don't see CRT monitors that much anymore. Gosh, that's really big and it feels like sturdy. Yeah, they seem pretty heavy duty. It's supposed to belong to whoever uses this room, wouldn't you say? Keyboard. Let's just tap a few see if we can wake this thing up. Damn, no dice. Three monitors here. Power's on, but not anyone on the screens. So small. I wonder what it is. I've got no idea. No, sometimes I mess with though. Four annotations on the desk. I wonder if I'm supposed to put something into them. I mean, probably. Forgot what game you're playing? Could whole panel in front of these big screen here. I wonder if any of these buttons do anything. Something on the screen now. What's this? 15 cells here, numbers and letters in them. Let me see that. Ah, I see. So whenever you touch a cell, the one next to it turns on or off. Now you just have to make the, all the cells on the right and bottom green. Um. Hey, Jupe, I found a piece of paper on that thing. You want to take a look at it? This has something to do with the puzzle. He a paper cover gave me. I think numbers and letters connected by equal sign on it. He just said it's probably ready to puzzle on the screen somehow. Thanks, Clover. Probably helps. <laughs> Alright. Let's go back and try again. I mean, so you can make all the cells green. I have no clue what I'm doing.
All right, boys. Come on now. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. I just need to figure out what I'm like actually trying to solve here. He said enter he equals ten. It does. I think. Got it. He did, Junpei, you're so smart. See, I've done all the excellent job and solved the puzzle. So I will expect from you, Junpei. Hey, come on, you're embarrassing me. Oh, whoa, don't get cocky, kid. We don't have time for that. Look at this. Check out the right edge of the control panel. Let's open open something came out. Cross emblem. Nice, boys. Paper in here. Not sure without taking... Dude, we don't need this anymore, do we? No, I don't think we do. Puff. I saw the puzzle even though I didn't have the answer. Pretty good. What happens when I... Whoa! Well, now we got something on the screen at least. Huh? What is this? Oh, wait a minute. I saw something like this. I figured out the Morse code buzz back in the communication office. Morse code? Yeah, I'll hear like this for Morse code. Two outs on the first line, four on the second, one on the last. I'm afraid I don't understand. Or I just should give it a shot anyway. All right, I'll try. Before I do that, though, so I'll run through updates. I just have to find an answer. Did hold the button down. Answer a dot. Let's see here. Answer all. I'm actually uh, determined if the answer was correct or not. All right, let's do this. All right, cool. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> Not a part of the machine. Well, he dim though. He doesn't have to roll on it. It's really dim though, it's got a map of the roll on but I can barely see it. Um Yo, it's a compass. Ha, now I get it. What do you mean? I guess that's what I guess you weren't there, Clover, but I saw the puzzle like this on the wheelhouse. See I do the same thing here. The same thing. The more important part is not like the tell them. Have the mass up the direction of the compass is the lines on the table. The steering wheel in the wheelhouse with the sun, I think I'm gonna use the wheel touch the side here. Again, okay, show me now. Let's see the instructions. I think it probably works the same way the steering wheel and the wheelhouse did. This touch the direction I want it to turn, the compass will turn that direction. Yeah, if I stop, then the compass is pointing where I want it to. I'm betting something happened if I can do it right. Alright, let's do this. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing. Alright, hold on. That's it. Okay. Where are we starting? Okay, so South West Uh Southeast Alright, cool. Let's do this boys. South, um, West, uh,
Southeast, I'll be honest, I didn't think you were looking at that. Alright, hold on. Whoa. Alright. Uh, southwest, southeast, uh, northeast, uh, east, north, east. Okay. I got this voice. Okay, so south, uh, west, uh, southeast, um, what was it like uh, northeast now? North, northeast, right? Yeah, yeah, please be right. All right, uh, east, um, the north. In east. I'm a genius. Yeah, he did, Jimpe. <laughs> good boy. Who's a good boy? Ah, knock it off. Hey, we don't have screwing around right now. So get on the right side of the monitor. Okay, I just slid open. Something came out. Oh yeah, I heard a noise too. You know that big box in the hall by exit? I think it made a noise. Like something unlocking, you know? A noise, huh? Big box near the entrance. Ah, holy shit. That's pretty damn creepy. It's a coffin in there. Coffin. Coffin. Oh man, the seventh thing. Yeah, he's all pale. Thinking the same thing I am. No way. Could this be... I'm sorry, but what's going on? It's a coffin. I wonder if there's a vampire in it. I guess I'm gonna take down the story. And it can bring himself to tell him. Well, anyway, let's have a look around. Metal plate on the coffin. It's like touching it. All ice. Ah, oh, the two machines. Holy shit. Man, this is serious. Ah, uh, well, let's open it, shall we? Clover, you give me a hand. Okay, I got it. Ready? Three, two, one. Ah, ah. No, like, it's seeming to be ready to open. Yeah, but it's not like it's screwed shut or something. I mean, it's locked in another way. So, I mean, think you can go open it with superhuman human strength? No, no, I... What's wrong? I think I'll just pass on this one, okay? The heck? Very well, let's have to go on the coffin for now. Only room a little more, shall we? Alice sleeps this fall chamber past the force of knowledge beneath the navel of gigantic. Is that actually true? Whoa! Three sheets of stuff. Whoa. Is there any other big box? No, there wasn't. Alright. Look at the file. What does it want, though? I don't know what it wants. I don't want to do this yet. No, I don't. No. Oh, wait. I have knowledge of arts. Thank God. Alright, so. 241. I don't know. Well, where did one. 
All right, what, what? Okay, let's see just what things stand in one for now. E and T. Okay. E and T. A, I, M, N, S, U, W, C, set. No, B is <laughs> You don't think hold on. I know what word I'm supposed to put here. I already figured out even without the hint, I just realized. And I messed up. Hold on. <laughs> Please stop giving me hints. I look dumb, even though I already know what I'm supposed to put here. Okay. Boys and girls. Let's turn on the right side of the device. Some puzzle. Oh, I like a someone sliding opening. Do you think he made that noise? Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yes, yeah, one more thing. Something behind the shutter. Perhaps the coffin's locked now. What? <laughs> Alright, fine. I'll open it. Okay, Junpei, you can do this. Just a box. Just a box. Holy shit, this is coffin. There's gonna be something horrible in there. I just know it. Okay. Okay, deep press. Here we go. Ha 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 ha. Oh man, there's nobody in there. Shit, give me a scare or something like that. What do you mean, nobody? Were, were you saying something to be in there? Ah, it's a long story. Ask Junpei about it sometime. Like someone said, there's nobody in there. There's something in here though. Well, two something actually. What is that? The Neptune key! <laughs> oh, that's correct, Clover, but we need to get out of this room first, yo. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, let's get the hell out of here as quickly as possible. I don't have any objections to that. Alright boys, the uh, main computer. Steering wheel symbol. Upright cross symbol. Bottom left from a series circle symbol. Lastly the waffle pattern. Alright, steering wheel cross circle waffle. Alright, you can make fun of me. Yeah, alright, cool. Do we need to use them all or just. Because, like. I go six and. Oh, okay. Well, still, we gotta go two and four. Oh, wait, how many. Okay, but we can't use nine. Okay, so. So 
So do we need to use them all? Except for nine. Okay. Well then... Ah. Uh, let's see. Seven plus. Which is wrong because I'm dumb. Twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Does that add up though? Because seven, thirteen, twenty-one. Okay, that's it, right? But nothing's happening. There's still three more invitations left empty. I mean, that's something happened when they were all filmed. That seemed, that seemed likely. Okay. Um. Cross. Hey, Zupay, something just showed up on the screen. Pulse feel like it's a lot different than the last one. Yeah, but they're more of those red balls you can't move. Notice each area are different too. Got the same rules as the last one though. Sure, do I want to double check that? Nah, no, I'll be fine. If I get confused, I'll look at the screen right over. Anyway. Like they said, picture worth a uh, thousand words. Let's give it a shot. It's not a picture worth a thousand words. Hey, shut it. At least I'm trying, alright? Alright. One, using four letters or four numbers. We see the seagull 10. Five, ten, four, six, ten. Awesome, Japan. It's only two left now. You can do it. Damn, so it looks a lot different than the last one. Look, there's more rules than though. Don't you think you should double check it? Come on, it's the third time I've done this. It'll be fine. So this, uh, um... If you think of anything covered, please don't strain yourself. You might hurt something. Ah, shut up. Just give me a break, alright? Alright, I'll think of something. Seven and seven. Well... Considering the fact that there's only... So many options left. Alright, um, actually thinking about this now. It needs to be 16, 16, probably. Unless we do 25. Which? Alright, so 9, 16, and then 19. There we go. Nice to work, you You've only got one left. I see light at the end of the tunnel. How did I put the emblem on the coffin of the presentation? Fourth one, but it looks a lot like the last couple. I think it's probably the last one. Once you solve this puzzle, I'm sure something will happen. Alright, I will solve it in no time. Eight, nine. Alright. Well. How? Six. Eleven. Eighteen. Twenty-six. 
One, three, four, ten, nineteen. Okay, wait, what? Okay, so... <laughs> Five numbers. There's no way. How? How? Nine, okay, so seventeen. Huh? Where did the noise come from? Underneath the keyboard. Where do you go, Jupe? You answer all the questions. Damn, Jupe, good job. You didn't have to answer nine. Something's now. Yes, I heard that as well. From the bottom left corner of the desk, I believe. I don't know where the keys all I want. Nothing's happening. picture what the I knew it I knew it what the hell is this this man with a mustache on the right he's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters he had the zero bracelet on his left arm and the second man with the glasses and a doctor's coat he's the ninth man the one with bracelet number nine he died after he went into door five but this guy the one in the striped suit? Oh man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about it. But what does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why, how, how in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah. It doesn't look like it was taken recently, though. Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap all look about ten years younger. Ah. So the Ninth Man and the man you found murdered in the Captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? I'm afraid I can't see it. You see, I'm blind. No. There's one more guy. He's got kind of long hair. He looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? Back? Yes. The reverse. The other side. Thank you. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project with Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. Huh. Then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary game nine years ago. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. But... I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project. But... why? Why am I so calm? It's like I already knew. Ah, of course. Whoa. I understand. Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. 
He was Gintaro Hongo. Ace is... Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. I couldn't be sure, though. After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told you. Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't have. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada, but Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. That's why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. I'm sorry. I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I'd told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. <sighs> hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for- Sure. Mm. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashiro. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashiro. Hongo Kubota Nijisaki Musashiro. Hey, Seven, do you? Shut it! Just just be quiet. I'm this close to remembering. This close. Hongo Kubota Nijisaki Musashiro. Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nonary Project. <gasps> shit. What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember. Remember what? Everything. Everything? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all of it. My memory's back. I, I remember what happened before I got snatched. What? Uh. <sighs> Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo from the right. The other three are Musashido, Nijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. And Kubota developed the actual technical details of the experiments. How do you know all this? Come on, man, I told you, I finally got my memory back. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. You really want to know? Of course. Me too. Hmm. This is gonna take a I'm curious. Hell, it'll probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, all right? Short version, huh? All right, fine. I'll give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold to my own code, because I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years ago. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. A history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. My investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet-talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. There was a bunch of movement there. He has a gun! I got a gun! In black suits, bang, bang, bang! I got a gun! Bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. No doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. Dun, dun, dun. Move before I realized it. I came out of hiding with my gun already in my hand. Don't move. I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one would find you for a week. That what you want? The fish here would love a meal. I kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug. That was my last thought. My 
face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I'd seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> it won't open. Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed, and sat down. Hmm. Huh. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then, I heard a faint voice. There's over the it's far away. Nine. I couldn't understand what it was saying, but I could hear one. It was pretty high, probably a little kid. Oh. Hurry over here, Kaying? No, it was several. Hmm. I hear five or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled on the metal frame and flipped the thing over. There it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. The hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit, but I knew it in my gut. This was where those voices were coming from. Hold up. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? It didn't matter. All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. <laughs> Could I fit? I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. And then... <sighs> yeah! How do you like that, you son of a bitch? I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face, so I wiped it off and crawled inside. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. It wind up eventually, and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... Massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. What's happening? Jesus Christ. What? I wasn't sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. Damn it! What the hell is going on here? I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... What the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top. Had to be about nine walls, all the same size. And the ceiling was an upside down funnel, almost like a chimney. I looked down. 
There they were. The kids I'd been searching for. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent. For the moment, from surprise and fear. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted in my own dig at myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy, slightly older than the others, in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. Not. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some. The That's not, boys. right? How are you gonna help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kinda cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're gonna be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's gonna start up soon. So... So... The voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I gonna do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm gonna be right back. What? Wh where is he going? Are, are you just gonna leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I tried to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back. I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. It wasn't time. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I needed something from the room. When I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. Then... Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. Back in the cell, I'd torn the bed sheets into strips and tied them together to make a rope. Stop right, that, guys. Stop tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right. Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining when... Incineration will begin in five minutes. The wall shook a bit and the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! Uh, right! I grabbed onto the rope. Is that you right there? The first one I pulled up was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. The boy in a jacket came after her. He said he'd climb up on his own. The boy in the uniform at the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast, but when he was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The door opened, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. The man's name was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Eight. Hongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! The boy in the uniform booked it up the rope. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the room leaving a furious Hongro yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? Incineration will begin in one minute. Hey! Old man! 
What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in a raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind me. I was going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. Everybody nodded and took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right it had black and yellow stripes. It had a device next to it on the wall. The plate on it read, Incinerator. Incinerator? Yeah, that's where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah, Pongo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there... Yeah, that's not good. <sighs> Yeah, you know, I mean, that's not good considering that the incinerator is active and it shoots out a lot of flames. That meant we better. So he might get burned alive. Get you know, that's not Go very the good. Door. Hurry. The kids started running and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! I didn't need to tell them twice. And up and up, feet pounded the steps. Up to the ground, ground, ground. Devil was on a tail. <sighs> the stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform said it was Yo! Snake. It's Snake. Is that Santa? Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Akane. That's strange. I didn't remember seeing that name in the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yet. <laughs> Maybe we outran her. We're wearing the uniforms, get it to a stop. I stopped too. And so did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. He turned to go. The kid, wait! I don't think the kid even heard. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket. The girl. I'm going after him. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. I'm going with you. <sighs> I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and took off down the stairs. I could hear him following. Snake? We ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Kane was nowhere to be found. God damn it, where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... Help me! Somebody help me! We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm and was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She is five. She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. <sighs> My brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Help me! Ah, you two! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her. Ah! Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... Use. The goddamn thing won't move an inch! He started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? This is Santa. Snake's here the too. Muffled, but all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What did I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? What? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing. Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, all right? We're gonna figure out a way to save you. I'm surprised Snake didn't recognize Seven's voice the entire time. It would seem like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration command 
animation will begin in 17 minutes. Figure something out, I promise. I promise, okay? You hear me? I promise! It was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door. Her brother was nearly crying himself. He could only stand there. Fists clenched so tight his knuckles were white. <sighs> uh, what happened then? Come on, man. Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. You think I want to remember that? Then... Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this... I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um... Are you... Are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but... There's... There's something I don't get. Hmm. So if you could just... Tell me... Did that girl, Akane... Really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended, and we heard something burning. We... The fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering, and, and in the middle of the room, there it lay. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but his body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him, and then... Um, I expected more, to be honest. Just like, just being honest here. Um, uh, can I ask you one more thing? What's that? The girl, Akane. What was her last name? What does it matter to you? Just, just tell me, okay? Please? Kurashiki. Her name was Akane Kurashiki. <laughs> <laughs> you were there that day, weren't you? The tall kid in the jacket. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You are correct, Detective. Don't misunderstand me. I told you before how Zero threatened me. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't say anything about what happened nine years ago. So you're saying you're not working for Zero, right? Of course not. Clover, what about you? Hey, come on! You really think I'm working with Zero? I told you before, you idiot! I was in Nevada, in Building Q. I did hear that a detective rescued the kids on the boat, but I didn't know it was you. Hmm. Well, I guess I believe you. All right, let me ask you another question. Santa's real name is Aoi Kurashiki. He's Akane's brother. You know that? No! No, I didn't. Did you? Well, yes. I know Aoi Kurashiki was her brother. But I didn't know he was Santa. At least not from the beginning. Nine years ago, he was in the middle of puberty. His voice is entirely different now. I'm ashamed to say that even my exceptional hearing wasn't able to make that connection. As such, <laughs> I had no reason to think Santa was Aoi. When did you figure it out? Clover told me that Santa might have been one of the subjects of the initial experiment. It was only a short while ago, while we were leaving the library. When she told me that, I had a... feeling. Santa is Aoi? Akane Kurashiki? June's brother? There's still a lot we don't know. I mean, like, a lot. But there is one thing I think we can say we know. What's that? The body we found in the shower room. It had to be Nijisaki, dressed up to look like Snake. What? Come on, man, what kind of detective are you? You didn't figure that out already? Hey, 
Go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, all right? Cut me some slack. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? If Junpei is correct, and the body in the shower room was Nijisaki's, that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the Nonary Project. Kubota, the person who conducted the actual experiments. Nijisaki, Hongo's assistant. Musashido, the man who financed the project. You mean this was all just revenge? Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. That's what it's about. That's why he killed them. That's what no, it's about. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? Peace. I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. What? What, what the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. Shit! Come on, we need to get out of here. How? I'm betting this sucker opens the exit. Come on, let's go. You don't just run out like same people in? Alright. Jinpei, look, it's unlocked. Yeah, now we can go back to the library. Hurry up, Jinpei, we have we don't have time. Let's go. Alright, let's go. You found it. I think the shaking stopped. It would seem so, but we are yet to be out of danger. You're right. Let's hurry. This exit needs the Uranus card, too. Hey, Junpei. Yeah, I know. All right. It's open. Let's go. Okay, Neptune Key. Let's see if you work. Yes! Oh, I think it unlocked. It says incinerator. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah, I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Why Let's didn't go. you do that nine years ago? <laughs> Did I don't know, save Akane? What the hell is going on? Um, What's guys? Wrong? Are you okay? Jumpy, you came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yes. Akane, you're I dead. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I Ethan Lotus. Yeah, yeah. Ace. What? Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. You have me at a disadvantage. And I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Hm. Another irritating insect. And how do you know that? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no <laughs> difference to Good me. Good question. This is a waste of time anyway. It's time for me to go. See, I learned this last playthrough. First is one. Give me your hand. Uh. Eight. And with this... Nine. The Ninth Man. Kubota's bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time Doubt. playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh. 
the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! What? Nope. <sighs> One more time. <laughs> now open! What is this? Why? That digital root should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why? Why isn't it opening? Now! Uh, no! Ugh. Uh, oh, that was close. Too close. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I ought to rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah, you finally figured it out, dumbass. Oh. <sighs> Ace, you killed Kubota. Nijisaki and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right. We'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door five alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number nine is dangerous. Whoever had the nine bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Adding nine to any number doesn't change the digital root, which means that number nine could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. Two, you wanted the number nine bracelet for yourself so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Niji Saki. Three, even if his number hadn't been nine, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened nine years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. Four, but last, and perhaps the most disturbing. You used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this nonary game was. Was it truly life or death or simply a harmless prank? You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki, chiefly because when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid, but his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me. Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. Then you mean to say, Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man, but I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. <laughs> well, I wouldn't blame you. Last but not least, let's talk about Musa Shido's death. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project, 
Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle, which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took, and then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. Why? Where was the blood on them? Though? There, was something, there was something I wanted, I wanted to, to speak, speak with you about, about Junpei. Junpei. Could, you, Could come you come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. It wasn't a very good plan. Had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace, Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it. But why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just read it. <sighs> Let's see. Number one, there are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. Hmm. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. <sighs> but yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. <sighs> Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes, so it would seem. I was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. <sighs> Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap, and I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah, by manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Am I right, Santa? Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any- Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki. No doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> but hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all, the person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki. I was one of the kids in the notary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Number one, I ain't zero. What? Wait, what? 
Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said all of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <sighs> to save someone. Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister, to save Akane. W what the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there, I saw... Uh... What? What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Oh, my head! Oh, my head, it feels like it's gonna pop! Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> there were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. <sighs> the transmitters were put in Building Q. So why were why was Santa and Akane put on and the receivers the, the were put on the team. gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but but there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason, she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. <sighs> I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... He knew because I knew. Junpei receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. Simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures then? Imagine a river that's split in two, like an upside down Y. The river flows in the top to the bottom from a single stream of the two branches. It only flows in one direction, it can never flow backward. Information is the same way, it moves from past to the future, but it never flows backwards. That's why people at the river source in the past will never know about this downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along one path of the river, but I am different. I can manipulate the morph field set to collect knowledge in the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river, even though the people on the other fork may know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet, but I'm also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet, perhaps. You could say I'm less than zero. This is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. Where, where did she go? June, no, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover? Oh shit. Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables in the ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up! Sure is about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he looks just drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? 
Doesn't even verify to go through the door, hey, but what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? You can't get through any number doors, it's two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's what he's gonna give us? The hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out. And now the gate's shut. Look, the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least seven Teddy is gone. Seems to be alright. Huh? I guess no harm in trying. Did this door still open? Damn! Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. You mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Oh, but he is. Shit, we gotta do something. But you can still get out through the door nine. It's the run. Alright, we can't. We can do this. I've just gotta. No, it's not gonna work. There's no way. Five of us can't open this door. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight equals twenty six. Two plus six equals eight. Certain conversation that Junpei, work. can I borrow your pen and notebook? Sure, why not? I think I'm gonna need them again. Ever again. Certainly looks purposeful. He's writing equations, a lot of them. Oh man, she doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, none of you are ripping out pages like that. What the hell are you Jeez. doing, Clover? Give me that! Hey, at least seven got away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she's writing. Let's see. <sighs> Six days behind. <sighs> what? Then there's no other way. Lotus. I think she's figured it out though. Man, this is just it's too okay. cool. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Without, uh, if you're not, look, it'd be bad, all right? Bad? Uh, yeah. Uh, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh-huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. Stuff you won't notice. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however, however, I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is, what is this? this? Why? The digital route should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why? Why isn't it opening? Because number nine brace it's number six. Just to see. Why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. So way too high. There's no way in hell we can get the whole seven popped out nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and set up this door with a nine on it. This is it. This is the end. Akane vision. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. Those feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. 
I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with this madness noise, like a clap of thunder. That was approximately 9 hours ago. I found my gun off on the ship that we were on. That was my residence with him began. My resident event melted into him, and we became one inside of Junpei. Somehow, I found myself in Junpei's mind, 9 years in the future. <laughs> but I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as the two movies showing on the same screen at the time. Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them, determine which movie switch. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here! Uh, that was my brother, Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my Come age. On, hurry up! We ran down a long, straight hallway and burst into a large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. The girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. And the girl stopped the crying girl and glared down at her. In two hours, the sun our game began. We were starting to fall apart, but just when all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we called him Snake. Hello? Everyone? Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fight sat down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hand were nine four leaf clovers. I was clovers. going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult, but my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If she's if she's nine, nine she's 18. <laughs> Clover's 18. <laughs> all three of those to heart. Then I Guys, Clover is legal. Good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Sup. Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually, he was up with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last Don't thing to say. Don't forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several number doors until we finally found a door with number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. So then the two groups walked through the doors. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time it was only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began to panic. And as if things had not gone bad enough already. Sound good. 
My brother Owie swallowed hard and answered. This room is gonna burn. Burn! The plaque on the door says incinerator, and that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Object terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then, high up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said. Then, four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent, away from the incinerator, and slipped down into the hall. He came out on the other side of door nine. On the wall opposite door was set uh, double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother, Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who had gone through door nine before us were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. Leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spouted upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they caught up. That was when I realized. Where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I'd had it with me when I passed through the vent. Then, I dropped it as we slid out. I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. It would stop me, but I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think, I suddenly moved. Ran to the central hall, the room that connected to the other areas of the ship. I hid in the shadows. Moments later, I felt a rush of wind as we ran past me at the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight and then I ran. Put quietly as I could down, down, down. Finally reached the bottom deck. Ran to the hallway and looked around there frantically. I was just where I thought it'd be, sitting under the opening of the vent. Ran over the the floor and as I ran back towards the staircase and freedom. A door to the incinerator opened and the man stepped out. It was Hongo. Gentaro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Oh, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. And then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hungo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as no, I could. Stop. Let go of me. Let I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was still macho man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit. Do as I tell you. He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! And suddenly, a, a door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Awe burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt towards Hongo. You came back! I cried out, but then ah, you're too late, idiot. Hungo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked towards the open number 9 door. Hungo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. Those fists never reached Hungo. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached in his pocket and moved two bracelets. Made them both over the scanner panel. Two ashes appear on the red. Check the screen and toss the bracelets carefully on the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. Said nothing at all. Walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock. A few moments later, two 
two other doors to shut as well. Faintly, I can hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran towards the door with a nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened Help voice. Me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where did Kong go? He went out the other door. What? Then it started again. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. Man, I knew what I was going to say, but that's one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, what we're back God's to them. What are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of... Fucking experiment. Wait, you have a PS4 you now? Yeah, I do. Connor, I added you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise. I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But incineration will begin in 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn. Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Oh. Well, god damn it. Okay, okay, fine. Did I accept? I don't know. I'm I following won't you. Ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing. How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait, the floor, it's moving. What in the hell is that? Well, let's get what say the hell it. is that? I'm a genius. What else could I say? Floor open and the machine rose up out of it. What's your PSN? Uh, go to scroll down on the stream and go to my info cards and my PlayStation is there. The floor open and the machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. If you're on your phone, just get out of the stream, click on info, and then you can scroll down to the PlayStation card. Monitor, keyboard, and a cross shaped device of some kind. The machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified, and tears poured down my face. The mafia is more, I took their plates and forced myself forward. I'm on phone. Okay, cool. So, like, just, like, minimize the stream. Go to my channel, go to info, and then just scroll down until you find the PlayStation card. I looked at the screen, it was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay Junpei, just calm down alright? Found it. Yep. Alright. God, man, I wish I could just shut up. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hey, move! God, hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you have to get shoved okay, all around. On. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... <laughs> wow. Huh, well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, what though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. Got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across the 5x5 grid. 
I was changed from one to eight. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah. Well, we can help, right? Hey, right, puzzle. How do you work? Oh man, that goddamn voice again. Incineration will begin in thirteen. Shut up! Shit, thirteen minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I started the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the second stick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window, the entry door was face, a frightened, evil face. It was Hongo. Oh, How long have you been watching me? Don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still it's muffled. Simple, really? But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> his laughter was muffled by the door. I still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bent my lip and glared at Hongo. Struggling to hold back You're hot tears. A terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that! And you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Huh? If you solve the puzzle, <laughs> just like the question mark. function of the red will in turn activate. Is it? The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets in the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now, there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face of my bracelet showed a five. One plus three plus five equals nine. I ran to the door with nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? Hirongo's muffled voice the, across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now start the experiment! Solve the puzzle! I did! I don't know how! Of course you don't! Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find a solution! I can't! Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's gonna be quite hot in there in a few minutes! I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after the face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in ten minutes. I was crying, great gulping sobs broke in the hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me, like a tremendous weight. Somehow I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to this device. I stared at the monitor. I can't! I just can't! There's no- there's no way! I can't figure this out! What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know! I didn't even know where to start! How is I gonna die? My palms were sweating, my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot, so hot, I couldn't breathe. 
I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as it would pound itself to pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! 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 Please! Help me! Jumpy! Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea though. Clover's looking at me, and I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here? Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck! Did someone break her connection? I swear I just heard her. Shit! Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was Jumpy! right there. I screamed as loud as I could. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. Then that means... Akane! Akane! Are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How? How did you know? I couldn't believe that you knew that. Now I understand what's right. in a man. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... Seven. So who was June this entire time though? That's what I don't get. As quickly as I could, I told him that I had a solved puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it! And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all this means. I know why the honor game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god, this is... This is insane. I, I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that I glimpsed of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her, no matter what. That voice reminded me of how much Jumpy! time I had left. Also, yeah, I was I right. Just hang on, all right. June I is zero. You out of there. Except she's not a bad zero, like I thought she was. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. I mean, she doesn't really have a few minutes, so. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. I felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes from now, my heart burned with my feelings for him. Alright, time to get to work, Jupe. Is Snake talking to me about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you- Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus, I didn't mean to snap, but there's more stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. We got numbers all over this grid, and I think the panels are out of order. So I see switches out. Staring at it isn't gonna accomplish anything. I thought I'd try it. Think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. The way out. Alright. What do I have to do here? One seems dead bolted. Okay. Hmm. 
percent numbers appear in the they're all single digits. Feeling the numbers change when I switch out the yellow squares. The square at the bottom. Why does it stay blank when I press hit? Then you turn the model off. Then is there some meaning to there being two models? What can I mean? What's happening? I'm just changing out as with whatever I can. It's like hit off. All the empty slots look like the one in the bottom right. You know, it's supposed to match? You got all the numbers in the square the same. So the yellow square, the numbers that show up in the hit change too. It looks like the numbers are affected by the adjacent squares. For example, when I switch out three to five, the hit or the hit number increases by two. Then it just adds surrounding numbers. I need to make everything. All right. So pretty much. So most of the answers should be two digits. But each square only has a single digit. Unless you calculate a different way. Digital roots. Digital roots, they all always end up as one digit. So. Ah. Uh. I just make them all nine. Okay. Then I make them all nine, right? That seems to be the case anyway. Oh, intense. Music in the background too. That says that bullet is a one. Okay, so changing that. Say pretty insane. Are you just saying? W again. I'm trying my best to solve this over here. Uh, 
Not a split. Can I change this in any way to make it work? Y'all, just solving this is like... I don't know what R even means. Fucking hell, I don't know. What the hell I'm supposed to be doing here? I have to just move the numbers so that they'll equal 9, right? But if that's the case, then like, what numbers do I move? As you mean. Number I'm supposed to be putting in here at this point in time. I think there's gonna be like some dumbass thing that's like. Ah. Screw it. Just do whatever you can. Up there, I don't know. Uh, seven, six. Right here, um, no, W is supposed to be here. I, I don't know. Three, so, so here, seven, seven, seven work. I don't even know. B, I don't know what to. Do here. Ah. But like. Alright, one. Alright. That's made it two nines. Uh, five. Okay, seven. But like. Ah, am I like looking into this too much? Like. Maybe like. Maybe not. Ha like, maybe it doesn't even have to add up. Probably just looking into this too much or something. What do these have to equal then? Maybe I just have to have this round of my nines. Like, that's always possible, right? No? I don't know what else would be. What are these letter tiles, is my question. Like, something seems oddly familiar about like these just letter tiles. I don't know what it is, though. What do I was seven? All right. P. Hold on. Hmm. 
wait just a minute. I saw a password. Well, I spell out a uh, password right here. Well, I spell out password right here. I don't know what I was supposed to put in this spot though. Okay, you know what? We'll get this. We're gonna get this. Alright. Alright, so... Three... If it sells out password... Then... There. Done. It took me quite a while, but like, I did it. The password. Nine. Is that your final answer? Yes, that's it. Akane, did you get it? Yes, I did. I solved it. I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did. Good job. Now I just have to press enter. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it. Okay, I will! Emergency shot incineration. feeling of a constant relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength that I had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For I just lay there laughing and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Whew. I can't quite believe I did that. I'm so glad. I, f I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't sound to think about that kind of shit. I need telecom. Hey, sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course, that's fine. I wiped tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were two bracelets on girl left behind. Now. Well, Seven Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to go someone who just saved Junpei, your lives, guys. Are you okay? Ah, shut it. I'm fine. Right. Okay. So maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? All right. Nothing will be back now. Here goes. Wait. Incineration will begin in ninety seconds. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. <sighs> what the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. And again. And again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell's going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin in 60 seconds. Wait, of course. That's what the numbers that showed up after my puzzle mean. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. State, Clover, Me, 7, and Lotus. Then door 9. No, that's it. That's the number on the door, isn't it? 9. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be seek a way out. Seek a door that. Holy shit. Of course. Then we just have to put the right number into the red and. Incineration will begin in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Don't have much time. I sure hope they can trust me on this one, or we are all fucked. All right, no time to explain. Just go. Verify your numbers on the red. Verify. Who? What all of you. All of us. 
us. We all need to verify. Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Hurry, hurry, hurry! Exhibition will begin in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, thank fucking Christ. No, no, no time to be happy. Time to go. <laughs> Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go! Come on, guys. Move it. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Pretty insane. And there goes the door. No, don't come down yet. You're not done. We still gotta find the dead. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are fully out of energy. Snake's shaking his head wearily. I just want to take a nap, Akane? but... Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her you made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But nothing. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried to save me, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming, and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! <gasps> Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever, but I couldn't. The moment I had passed that door, my brace had begun to come down death. I looked away from it and looked around. The door had already closed. I saw the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to him and scan all the bracelets. That's when Tungo had dropped on the scanner panel. Good thing you picked those out. I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we called seven and nine years and Snake, the blind boy, who were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. Alright, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Oh, he was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar seven and Snake out of its surprise and they nodded. We took off running up the siring stairs of freedom. Time for more running. But if they can get us out here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating, so I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Is someone talking? Hey, Junpei, can I ask you something? What's up? That door. The one with the nine on it. Why'd it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is 26. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base 10? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base 16? Zero through F. After nine, it starts at A and goes from there. B You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. 
Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? Uh, hmm. Uh, oh. Q. 26. And what does that mean? That wasn't a nine on the door. The lowercase Q. Q. A fucking lowercase Q. Yep, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a nine in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Time for more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now, I'm gonna tear a muscle. It's like every single cell in my body is dying for air. Damn, every breath I take in is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be any more of these steps left. Just run, run, run like a bullet down rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're gonna run along the black giant coiled dragon. Finally. I can barely breathe. No, Jinpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. All right, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes, we're finally here. Please do. Sure, you're looking at a big heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. Even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Kane. You're gonna open, and you're gonna open now. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was always. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy, I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us have been kidnapped. We're finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. I could hear the thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. As the last cry echoed across the ocean. And then it was gone. It's over. Oh, he whispered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue. So what would happen in nine years? Yes, finally. Air. God damn, that sun's bright. I barely see anything. I admit, it doesn't look quite like that. No Wait. way. You've got to be shitting what? me. It can't be. This is. The base in Nevada. I I knew it. I knew it. I knew they were on the base. This is the building in the Nevada desert. The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time, we were in building Q. Sure enough, that's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've, I've, I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Let's hear something fall. Right, our bracelets. Because I really got a good look at the other side of one of these. See inside you. Just a little electronic chip, like an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Okay. Figures. Jumpy. So then why is Santa here? <sighs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. I didn't think it didn't like that. Alright. Damn. 
That was something. That was something. Gotta say. I mean, this entire game was something. The entire team behind this game was great. They did a great job. There's more endings. I could always try for the uh, other endings. But I think for now, I can just put this game on. Yeah. Hold for a bit. Put this game on hold for a bit. <sighs> that was a journey. Well, I mean, if you guys happen to be watching this playthrough on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. There might be bonus episodes out of the other three endings, two or three endings, one of the two. Um, this is something. I don't know what other words to use. I don't look something after the credits, so I'm just not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna end it yet. But, yeah, that was, dude. It's all he's gonna ask if we want to start. Oh, Are here we you? go. Okay. Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. Just before the end of elementary school, Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill, looking down the town. How does it look really then? Flat. He was half serious now, joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um. Well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts. But then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> what does that even mean? Shinpei <gasps> grinned and... Ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do... S do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing's pretty smooth ride. So it's nice someone to leave it to us for at the building. Keys in the ignition of the gas and tank. Look at this present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in. Now we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven are all squeezed in the back seat. I still can't believe we let her drive. This is so fun! I mean, she's 18! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around. And there's no speed! Limit. Hey, uh, Clover, watch those bumps, all right? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. I can't help if I'm big, all right? Suck it up. Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <clears throat> and Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no Where's doubt about Ace? It. Then we've got to hurry if we want to. Is this dead somewhere? Sure thing. Oh shit! God damn it! She doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't think a car like this could go that fast. We're still throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we ran into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bushes in the back of one of the hills, drenching a kit in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them, hey, furious. What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them, quickly scooped up the kit and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Officer, please! You have to come with me! The police and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy sprawled out on the ground with face covered in big swollen pumps. Away after you threw the kitty to me? He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth yeah, had fallen I, out. I guess I could've... Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too, but... I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies. Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed they it through the wind. They asked what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that. So I... Hey, 
hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Well, I guess I should say Guitaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? Oh well, yeah, I guess He's they could. In the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> still tied up. Assuming his mouth taped shut. His eyes just look empty. Huh, <laughs> no emotion. He's just giving up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. <laughs> I was gonna tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. Please look at me when you talk, man. I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces, I thought. I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces by peering into people's minds. You could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply, but if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness... I think that's not how you, pal. Time for that tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little well, nosy. question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own. I did catch him when he finally slipped up. And during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about poor Dane and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <laughs> Sounds like Kong has something to say. Alright, finally you talk, but you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Madrigor, of the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create Soporo. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is gonna go on forever. Ah, tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here, uh, this is for you. What's this? This is, uh, for you, doll. Uh, his name is Junpei. Somebody pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. His hands are a doll made of yarn, small enough to finish his palm. are you sure it's, uh, for you, doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so th that means it's for you, right? I, uh, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? Wait, what? Unimportant. That's... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, y you know how after June, um, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, uh... You know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Okay. So, okay. Uh, I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes. I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this, it me. So we always together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reach my hand out and pick it all gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed on my face and fell on the dune's tiny arm body. Oh, Jumpy, I'll never forget you, I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. 
the sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down towards the horizon. Last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set, we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one the light of the town began to flicker on. Yes. Still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the base of this chase far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago she died and incinerated on Gigantic. But she's still alive now as June. But how? Was he a dead top in the morphic field set and saved for nine years ago? Alright, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that then, how do I make sense of what seven remembers? Snake makes sense, he's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. But seven. He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or wait. We didn't saw it at all. It's my logical explanation. I so you told me the truth, Seven. You look satisfied. No. No way. You couldn't. Hey look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road. Huh? What? Hmm? Alice. The burning gaze in the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on that shimmering plane was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It'd be long before Junbei realized who she was. Don't forget your towel. Okay then. Let's just skip through this real quick. Just skip through this real quick, yeah. What? Hurry up. Ow. A bed? really hurt skip through all this text because we've heard it like three times already Well, boys, there we go. There we go. The end of Zero Escape Non Airy Game 999 9 hours 9 person 9 doors. That was a. That was a let's play. I don't know what else to say. Like, the game was great. I'll probably be playing Virtue's Last Reward later. 
so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, I very much enjoyed this. I think me and my friends had a great time just theorizing over this game. <laughs> I've never seen anything on this game, so I went into this blind. I'm so glad I didn't, because I don't think you would really be able to enjoy the story as much if you didn't go into this, like, blind, and you already knew everything that was happening. Like, if you already knew that June was zero, that Snake was, I mean, that, uh, like, Snake wasn't actually dead, that uh, Santa was working with zero, whatever, that Ace was a bad guy, all those, like, you never really would have been able to enjoy this game as much. But I'm glad I did. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you're if you're watching on Twitch, I appreciate the follow. If you just want to press the heart icon, you know, not mandatory. If you're watching on YouTube, you remember to uh, hit subscribe if you feel like it. Once again, not mandatory. I uh, like, comment, do whatever, share with your friends. I appreciate it. I need to get into the quit menu before I just keep talking and look dumb. Anyway. Ciao.